So welcome to TechnoDad Life and my name is Jeff and so today what we're going to be doing is going over what open source software is available for your PC that you have at home to create your own router firewall. If you like this video make sure you like and subscribe and I'll try to remember to put links in the description to anything I mention in the video. So first we need to go into a little background. So most of us are start out with something like this. This is a router that my internet cable company provided and it is adequate but it has many flaws. So one is you can't control things basically. So the software is dumbed down so basically nothing can go wrong but you can't actually make it better. So I'll give you an example of that. So for me only broadcast on one Wi-Fi channel and that Wi-Fi channel happened to be the same as my next door neighbors. So that was causing quite a bit of interference. And I looked into the software that came with it, it's just controlled with the app and I could not change that. And I could not change pretty much anything. So basically you can get a password and uh, connect to the internet but you can't change any of the settings into it. So next what I did is I used uh, actually the tomato router software but has, which has since been incorporated into OpenWorks to flash a new uh, BIOS or uh, software onto this router here. So that works but the memory and horsepower in these routers is pretty much non-existent. So if you want to do more uh, packet sniffing and other things like that, or even just explore different things, they're not the best machines for that, though they do serve a purpose. Uh, and it's also limited, so not very many routers anymore actually support being flash to open work. So if you are interested in flashing your router, you can go to the openwork.org website, click on supported, devices and then go down to the hardware database and search through that. They do give you some general guidelines so it has to be more than 4 megabytes of flash and 32 gigabytes of memory uh, but you definitely have to it's actually the number of routers that can be flash seems to be going down over time. So next I looked into the sort of granddaddy of all routing software PFSense now, if you don't know anything about PFSense, basically it's a free BSD based software. It's been a very long, around a long time, and it has since been commercialized. So uh, you can buy support for it if you want to. Now, the one problem with uh, PFSense is actually free BSD. So free BSD is not as up to date as other say Linux based systems uh, doesn't have as much hardware support and there is a limited amount of people uh, supporting it compared to Linux. So this is a problem when it comes to hardware support so usually it's a few generations behind. So now for me I bought this mini PC actually a few years ago during COVID where I was going to make a router but never got around to it and so when I tried to install PFSense on this, the install would always fail, even though the hardware is a few years old. So if you want to try different router software that is free BSD based, then I would suggest OpenSense. And so OpenSense uses a newer kernel and so it supports more hardware. Now I could get it to install on this, but I ended up having problems and so uh, the problem was the, so let me go back a few steps here. So when I first set it up, so when I first installed it, it worked great. Actually, my internet speed increased. And as you see in the pictures here, uh, it has a great UI. So where this downfalls is actually in the installation. This, again, is not the most modern piece of hardware, so it should be well supported. I could get it to install, but it usually took a few different times to actually get it installed. Uh, now that could be a problem with this box in particular, or it could be a problem with FreeBSD, again, limited hardware support. 
And so once I got it installed, that worked okay, but then the speed increased, but then my Wi-Fi would come in and out. So there's some glitch where uh, using an access point with this for some reason in my setup wasn't working well. So I wanted something different. So there are other free BSD options. And so this is DynFi Firewall, which is a French router software. Then there's the FreeBSD router project, which is an open source router project. So I decided after my experience with PFSense and OpenSense that I would just sort of skip uh, FreeBSD altogether. So what are our options then? Well, there's actually quite a few, but much less than what I was expecting. So for Linux firewalls, there are some, but the numbers keep going down every year. So this is what is available at this time. So there's Smooth Firewall, but Smooth Firewall hasn't been updated in about four years. So I decided not to use that. Next was ViOS VYOS, which is a Debian-based firewall. Uh, the only thing wrong with ViOS is that it is command line based and to tell you the truth, as I get older, I like things to have graphical interfaces because usually they're easier to use for me. And next uh, up was Untangle NG Firewall. So an Untangle is controlled by Arista. And so this used to have a free version, but as far as I can tell right now, it, it, you have to buy uh, some type of license for it for at least a year. You can leave it in the comments down below if I'm wrong but I'm cheap so I didn't want to pay for anything because I knew there had to be some open source alternatives and free alternatives out there. Now an interesting project I found was the Linux Router Project, which is installing a router basically into your Linux distribution with one command. So this looks really interesting. I have not tried it yet, uh, but again, it looks like it's command line based, so we're going to skip that right now, but maybe try it sometime in the future. So now a dead project that looked interesting, but it doesn't seem to have been updated in a few years, is Shorewall. But as you can see, it was based on Ubuntu 14.04, which was quite a long time ago. And you can see up here, the important notices were last updated in 2019. So it's been about four years. If you find a project that I don't mention here that is still active, I'll make sure to make a video about it. And if you leave it down in the comments below. So next up is IP Fire. So IP Fire is an open source uh, router firewall software. Uh, and it is also based on Debian, I think. And so it has all the software that I need in one. And here we can scroll down and seeing everything it does here. And the other thing it does is you can have add add-ons. And so here we can see file servers like Samba, make it a wireless access points, add cups, backups, communications, mail servers, antivirus, uh, security, network tools, and even uh, things like system monitoring, UPS tools, virtualization, and even multimedia. So now when I installed this before, super easy installation, sort of a regular Linux installation. Uh, not very pretty like the other ones, but actually functioned a lot better. So the installer worked a lot better. It just worked. How's that sound? Uh, the actual uh, GUI that you see is not pretty. So here you can see an example of it. It definitely needs someone who does graphic design to actually make it look nice. But if it works well, you know, I'll just go for it. So, so we'll see. So there is one final option. So say you've uh, tried all the different software, you did it on any PC that you had lying around, but they're all a pain in the butt. And literally all these programs are in pain in the butt when you start out with. What are your other options? Because your, your, your um, cable router doesn't work that well and whatever. So what do you wanna do? The final option is you can get uh, Firewalla, which is a router with 
software in it that's very visually appealing and easier to use than anything that we've mentioned so far. And if you look at their cheapest options, it's not really any different than buying a mini PC. So, I don't know, why don't we do this? Let's take a look at the software. So it has a great graphical interface and I haven't looked at this recently, but it's mainly controlled through your cell phone, but you can also do it on your computer. One, one seat is free for personal use. So what am I going to do? So I'm going to install IP Fire on this again and see how that works. We'll give it a 30 day trial. We need that Wi-Fi to work though. So hopefully this will take care of that. I do have some extra access points which I can actually try on there too. And if none of those works, I might get a firewall if I save up the money for it. So that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.